Federal agencies with competing interests are slowing the country's ability to track and control an outbreak of highly virulent bird flu that for the first time is infecting cows in the United States, according to government officials and health and industry experts. The response has echoes of the early days of 2020, when the coronavirus began its deadly march around the world. Today, some officials and experts express frustration that more livestock herds aren't being tested for avian flu and that when tests and epidemiological studies are conducted, results aren't shared fast enough or with enough detail. They fear that the delays could allow the pathogen to move unchecked and potentially acquire the genetic machinery needed to spread swiftly among people. One dairy worker in Texas has already fallen ill amid the outbreak, the second U.S. case ever of this type of bird flu. The outbreak of H5N1 avian influenza among U.S. dairy cows, first reported on March 25th, has now spread to at least 33 herds in eight states. On Wednesday, genetic evidence of the virus turned up in commercially available milk. Federal authorities say the milk supply is safe, but this latest development raises troubling questions about how widespread the outbreak really is. So far, there is only one confirmed human case. Rick Bright, an expert on the H5N1 virus who served on President Biden's Coronavirus Advisory Board, told me this is the crucial moment. There's a fine line between one person and 10 people with H5N1, he said. By the time we've detected 10, it's probably too late to contain. That's when I told him what I'd heard from Sid Miller, the Texas Commissioner for Agriculture. He said he strongly suspected that the outbreak dated back to at least February. The commissioner speculated that back then, as much as 40% of the herds in the Texas panhandle may have been infected. Dr. Bright fell silent then asked a very reasonable question. Doesn't anyone keep tabs on this? The H5N1 outbreak, already a devastating crisis for cattle farmers and their herds, has the potential to turn into an enormous tragedy for the rest of us. But having spent the past two weeks trying to get answers from our nation's public health authorities, I'm shocked by how little they seem to know about what's actually going on and how little of what they do know is being shared in a timely manner. How exactly is the infection transmitted between herds? The United States Department of Agriculture, the Food and Drug Administration, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention all say they are working to figure it out. According to many public health officials, the virus load in the infected cow's milk is especially high, raising the possibility that the disease is being spread through milking machines or from aerosolized spray when the milking room floors are power washed. Another possible route is the cow's feed, owing to the fairly revolting fact that the U.S. allows farmers to feed leftover poultry bedding material, feathers, excrement, spilled seeds, to dairy and beef cattle as a cheap source of additional protein. Highly pathogenic avian influenza, HPAI, is a disease that is highly contagious and often deadly in poultry, caused by highly pathogenic avian influenza A, H5, and A, H7 viruses. It is also known as bird or avian flu. HPI viruses can be transmitted by wild birds to domestic poultry and other bird and animal species. Although bird flu viruses do not normally infect humans, sporadic human infections have occurred. It is important to note that highly pathogenic refers to severe impact in birds, not necessarily in humans. The U.S. Department of Agriculture USDA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, along with state partners, continue to investigate an outbreak of highly pathogenic avian influenza HPAI, virus impacting dairy cows in multiple states. Infection with the virus is causing decreased lactation, low appetite, and other symptoms in affected cattle. The FDA and USDA have indicated that based on the information currently available, our commercial milk supply is safe because of these two reasons. One, the pasteurization process, and two, the diversion or destruction of milk from sick cows. The pasteurization process has served public health well for more than 100 years. Pasteurization is a process that kills harmful bacteria and viruses by heating milk to a specific temperature for a set period of time to make milk safer. Even if virus is detected in raw milk, pasteurization is generally expected to eliminate pathogens to a level that does not pose a risk to consumer health. However, Pasteurization is different than complete sterilization. Sterilization extends shelf life but is not required to ensure milk safety.
While milk is pasteurized, not sterilized, this process has helped ensure the health of the American public for more than 100 years by inactivating infectious agents. Nearly all, 99%, of the commercial milk supply that is produced on dairy farms in the U.S. comes from farms that participate in the grade a milk program and follow the Pasteurized Milk Ordinance (PMO), which includes controls that help ensure the safety of dairy products. Pasteurization and diversion or destruction of milk from sick cows are two important measures that are part of the federal state milk safety system. There are a number of collective activities being undertaken to ensure the continued effectiveness of the federal state milk safety system. In addition to these specific research activities, the FDA is collaborating closely with CDC's Food Safety Group, as well as its surveillance team that's monitoring emergency department data and flu testing data for any unusual trends in flu-like illness, flu, or conjunctivitis. To date, surveillance systems do not show any unusual trends or activity. As noted by USDA and some press reports from the World Health Organization, WHO, and other sources, the presence of the virus has been detected in raw milk. Based on available information, pasteurization is likely to inactivate the virus, However, the process is not expected to remove the presence of viral particles. Therefore, some of the samples collected have indicated the presence of HPAI using quantitative polymerase chain reaction QPCR, testing. During the course of the outbreak, the FDA has been evaluating milk from affected animals in the processing system and on the shelves. We are completing a large representative national sample to better understand the extent of these findings because qPCR findings do not represent actual VIR.